cherished and loved. And if you'd like to, join me as we say together, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Campanez. I would like for all of our original Selma marchers to come up and take a seat with their ears. Have you recognize it? and ministers just raise your hand wherever you are. Let's give them a hand also. I am Reverend Ira G. Edwards, senior pastor of the church that you all need to go down the road to, Damascus. All of our elected officials here today, raise your hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Somebody prayed for good weather today. Since you won't take credit for it, I did it. We are now coming down to the part that I like the best. One of the things that we're here today to do is voter registration. We have Sharon Allen back there doing voter registration. Don't leave here if you're not registered to vote. If you leave here today without registering to vote, you just stomped on all those that died and suffered at Selma. If you don't like what's going on, vote. And let me tell you youngsters something. They try to get you in prison in jail with warrants because you can't vote then. You can't get registered to vote. So don't keep let don't don't let your your, your kids grow up to be crooks. Amen. All right? Amen. 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 Now my uh, privilege is to introduce our guest lecturer for this afternoon, none other than my friend and brother, Reverend Dr. Kim D. Yarborough. He is the pastor of Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church. He also is an instructor on Afro-American religion at the U of M. He is renowned in his work, in his travels, and so I am think he's of age, he can speak for himself. Because I know you've been here. Now, uh, there's only a couple of seats, but if anyone has sitting problems, we want you to have a couple of seats here. Okay? Thank you so much. I uh, introduce to some and present to others the Reverend Dr. Kim D. Yarber. Let us greet him by a good hand clap. officials, my fellow pastors, ministers, brothers and sisters, it's good for us to be here. Amen. I want to talk to you today from the subject, ordinary people, pleading for justice. Five dead decades ago, a city called Selma, some 853 miles from this place, 600 courageous yet ordinary, restless and discontent people marched for justice. Those individuals paraded for the cause of equality because of their united desire for the right and responsibility to vote. 
some 600 months ago, 50 dozen regular people, inspired by the hope of a better day, refused to be still or quiet any longer. They began walking to let the world know of their need to be free and equal participants in the nation they helped to build. 18,250 days ago, uh -huh. wails of word, sighs of sorrow, yeah. groans of gloom, Come on, dredges of discouragement yes, sir. Yes, sir. were replaced by marching feet of courageous, ordinary people determined to see a new day. Fathers and mothers, sisters and brothers, little children, teenagers, domestic workers, electricians, doctors, nurses, masons, plumbers, office workers, attorneys, preachers, teachers, morticians, professional laborers, uh, beauticians, barbers, farmers, sharecroppers. They stepped through the streets of Selma, Alabama, yes, believing that participation would lead to a better day yes, for all people. Uh -huh. At the apex of the Edmund Pettus Bridge, the leaders of the march, John Lewis and Hosea Williams, saw a sea of blue helmets, blue uniforms, Alabama state troopers, from one side of the highway to the other, and behind them dozens of armed men, some on horseback, and many carrying clubs the size of baseball bats. The marchers were accused that day of having an unlawful assembly, and they were told their march was not conducive to public safety. And they were ordered to disperse and go back to their churches and homes, but the marchers would not turn around. They chose not to run away. They could not, in fact, even run away. They wanted to be there where they were, there were too many to go back or turn back. Their only option was to kneel and pray. But even before the multitude could kneel and bow in prayer, the troopers were ordered to advance. And they rushed forward, the marchers having no opportunity to avoid the bull whips, billy clubs, tear gas, or horse hooves. Yeah, yeah. Many choked on the tear gas. Others fell to the ground from the blows of the clubs. People were swept to the ground, screaming, arms and legs flying. Those still on their feet began to retreat, huddling together. Many were bleeding badly, gaping cuts could be witnessed even on children. Several women were lying on the pavement. People cried, some vomited. Police on horseback were purposely riding over the top of fallen people, leading their horses to stand on the shoulders and stomachs and legs of helpless people. Within a few minutes, 59 were, uh, marchers were injured, heads bloody but unbound. They were still determined to get their rights. On March 7, 1965, they were boldly walk, they boldly walked not just for themselves, they walk for us too. Yeah, yeah. Today, March 8, 2015, we walk in the memory of those embodied by the testimony of their demonstration. Yeah. We march determined to have our rights. Yeah. The marches of 1965 are our heroes and our sheroes. Yeah. On that day, there, there was no keynote address. The demonstration of courage of the ordinary people spoke for all of those who marched that day. Today, thanks be to our Creator, we face no police opposition to gain our rights for all of the bloodshed that day and all of the agony suffered by the marchers that day. Their wounds healed, but think of the endless nightmares and haunting thoughts experienced by those who perpetuated the evil against ordinary innocent people right. marching to obtain equality, yeah. marching to gain right, the right to vote for disenfranchised people. Yeah. Today we face a new enemy, 
Our new adversary is not state troopers with billy clubs. Our new antagonists are not those who say, take no use in trying. Those who are indifferent and, and are usually the people first afflicted or affected by the trials of this land. Yeah. Uh, those who are no matter policies that are those that put in place, those who are indifferent are usually the people who are most affected and they serve as our adversary today. Yeah. Too many people in our community have committed political suicide, believing that a single vote would make no difference and so, take no use in trying. Those who have been indifferent, those who have refused to participate, those who have denied themselves the right and the responsibility of voting will need only to look in the mirror and discover that much of what ails us today and will ail us tomorrow is a lack of gratitude to those who sacrificed so much before us that we might have the right and the responsibility of voting. Those who do not vote afflict themselves along with their children and even unborn generations. They afflict themselves with the wounds that all will not easily heal and the memories could have, will not easily uh, be erased. They are the ones who, by their indifference, have allowed politicians to strip this community of rights. All right. We live in a community where elected officials do not govern, and so we have no voice in what happens in our own community. We are dictated to by people who are not of our community, who are told we must do, by a, do what the government uh, says do without ever having uh, the opportunity to speak for ourselves. Right. Indifference to voting, has led this community to not having the dollars needed for our local police, who are our neighbors and relations, serving and protecting us. Now we are policed by police who do not live in our community, have no stake in our community, and we are left without any real means to appeal. Those who refuse to vote and remain indifferent have by their lack of concern giving the ammunition to powers who continue to look for ways to tax us without improving our schools or our quality of life. We have water rates two and three times higher than anybody else in the state. Those who refuse to indulge in the political process refuse to see the hurt being done to ourselves their children, and the community as a whole. We march this day in the name of justice. We've come in an effort to wake up the sleepy and to fire up the lukewarm. We have come to encourage the depressed and to look and to, 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 to help and to cheer up those uh, who are discouraged and to help the soldiers of God to stand up. Right now, in this moment, Right in this moment of time, we have come to challenge those who have been indifferent, to understand that your lack of concern is as brutal as the evil act of the state troopers in some of 50 years ago. Your lack of concern is as hurting uh, as the billy clubs, the horse pulls, the tear gas, and long has long-lasting effects. You must understand Something is desperately wrong. You must come to know that there is something you can do. The future is in your hands. Listen to the words of an ancient, yet courageous, ordinary, sheep-shearing prophet whose name is Amos. We hear his words and recognize immediately there is something we can do. The ancient spokesman comes to have a word with us concerning the mistreatment of the poor and disenfranchised. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the ancient preacher steps forward to point out uh, a commanding imagery that something is very wrong. Yes, sir. Something is wrong with the way plain and regular people are being treated. Uh -huh. Amos is under orders to inform the nation 
that the Most High and Eternal Spirit yeah. is not pleased with the oppression yes, yes, and the injustice yes. being suffered by his children. And it declares to us that he has traveled the streets of Flint and Genesee County yeah. and seen with his own eyes the results of policies put in place that aren't right for regular folk. The prophet Amos comes with serious concerns focused on injustice being suffered by oppressed people. His focus speaks against the treatment of the downtrodden. Amos wants us to know uh, the other inconsistencies of the nation and that they have been piqued and the phony shows of misdirected religious zeal have served and caused many to suffer. And was concerned about those who have lived as kings and queens while presiding over the oppression of the poor. Amos is concerned with those who are in position to bring about change and stop the hemorrhaging of our young people from our community. But instead of allowing it to continue, there are those who enhance the suffering of the have-nots in order to benefit the have. Amos has come to speak to those who hang around places of worship, uh -huh. conduct great religious yeah. feasts and ceremonies and programs, yeah. but at the same time, yeah. continues supporting an atmosphere that denies the rights of ordinary people yeah. who've been long mistreated and downtrodden. And this has come to let us know that the Almighty One, bless His holy name, sees the widespread destruction and oppression. The High and Holy One sees the miscarriage of justice. And the provider over the universe says to us, the power is in your hands. You have been given what it takes. Live by your faith and see what your religion can do. Let justice run down as water, righteousness as a mighty spirit. We must recognize that we are the change agents. We are looking for, and there is hope. It's a hope that will not give up, a hope that will not dry up, and it's a hope that will not fester and become bitter. Ours is a hope that will continue to work for a brighter day. Ours is a hope that will continue to work for social change. Ours is a hope that will look for understanding and, and neighbors become family and friends together. Ours is a hope that will not be frustrated forever. Ours is a hope, I tell you. That will not simply swallow the swallow the distaste of injustice. Ours is a hope that will continue to stand united for what is right. With this hope, we go forward believing in our hearts that there will be a brighter day because we will work each day for a better day. With this hope, we stand as soldiers recognizing that those who are responsible for perpetuating injustice against God's people, even in the name of God, will reap what they sow. With this hope, we go forward believing in our hearts that injustice against the poor and oppressed, as well as the aggression against the disenfranchised, is not the will of the Almighty. We are not, we are not hoping in the power of government. We are not hoping in the power of this world. We have hope in that power that will change the troubles of this land. We have hope in that power that will steal the storm wheel winds that blow. We have hope in that power that will set us free. We, we don't have to burn buildings. We don't have to loot. We don't have to steal because there is one who stands above us who goes before us. There is one whose judgment will always be just. One who will never be swayed by, by the merciless. One who has promised in times like these that we can ask for strength. Yes, sir. And we will have what we need to keep on talking. We may have to drink tears for a season. Uh -huh. But we have the joy of this assurance that our trouble will not last all right. Because the Lord God Almighty knows just 
how much we can bear. Although the love sometimes gets heavy, the Lord has never left us alone to bear alone. And God knows, and I'm so glad he knows, just how much we can bear. And we shall uh, overcome. I say we shall overcome. In fact, we are overcoming right now today. Fifty years from now, uh, let our grandchildren and children and an unborn generation say, that was an ordinary. Yes, sir. On March the 8th, 2015, we decided they would be a change agent. Walk together, my brothers and sisters. But our children say, just live by their faith and hunger and thirst after righteousness. God bless you. I thank you. responsibility that those rights entail and right here in this community we know that every day there are children that go to bed hungry there are families that don't have a doctor there's violence on too many streets and there are individuals who become so disconnected that, that they're not using that, that right to vote. That's such an extraordinary vehicle and has worked for so much positive change throughout our history. And it's right now in the 21st century to look back at what happened in the 20th century with the Civil Rights Movement and what happened before then in the 19th century and the 18th century because we have challenges that we have to rise up and face. You know, it's a point of pride in, in our family that my father, and if he were able to be here, would be able to join our, our 65 Selma marches. He, he took Amen. the trip with his friends from college to be there, not on Bloody Sunday, but on the subsequent days when the troopers may have thought that they won that first battle, but they reorganized, and they went back for another day and another day. Yeah. See that, that struggle may have been lost for a moment, but the movement yeah. kept going. Yeah. And that's the responsibility that we now have, is to carry that movement forward in the 21st century because yeah. not everyone in this country, certainly not everyone in this community, has an equal opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. So we have that challenge that we have to bear as we look back and commemorate those amazing heroes, including a few right here in our own communities and those in our own families who have brought us to this point. There's one thing that I, I believe deeply about our community, because we faced extraordinary problems here for a long time. But I believe, and our demonstration here today proves that we are stronger than our problems. We are bigger than the issues that face us. And while we may be down for a day, we will rise again faster, we will overcome, and we will continue to work together in our diversity, 
in our brotherhood and sisterhood and humanity. And if we can do that, then we will fulfill the responsibility that's been placed on us here in the 21st century to carry this civil rights movement forward until we come to the day when each and every American, and indeed each and every man, woman, and child across this world has that equality and that opportunity that so many have worked to bring us to this point. Yeah. May God bless you. May God bless the city of Flint. Thank you very much. As we get ready to break ranks and go to our various destinations, Pastor Carl and I decided to do a little something, something for you. There, there's a song, there's a song that our slave foreparents sang and said that, oh, freedom, oh,